of uh, new people and, and old trustees as well. New and old in terms of terms on trustees, not age. Experience, <laughs> Experience yes. <laughs> okay, roundtable discussion. Karen, do you have a topic for the next one? Yes, it's okay. going to be, would the world be better off without religion? Would the world be better off without? Religion. Religion, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Okay. Well, if anybody else would like to join us, I mean, you were, you're free to, I mean, just to remind people, you don't have to commit to this every week, you know, every time we have it. If there's one that you feel like you'd like to join us for, just let Patsy know so she can send you the link. All righty. Good luck with that one. Let me know the outcome, okay? <laughs> okay. It may determine my future. I don't know. <laughs> Life is good, continues, Clay. We're going to have fun. This is, the topic is fun. It's near and dear to my heart. So again, if you want to join us, it is going to be fun. Okay. <laughs> Why did you sit down? It's birthday bash. <laughs> So we are going to have the all, there's three things. I thought about this this morning. This is my revelation of the morning. There's three things that everybody in this room have in common. We're, child, we're all children of God. We all like to have fun. Um, and we all have birthdays. Um. So on the 24th, we're going to celebrate our birthdays with lots of fun as the children of God. And it is going to be the ultimate birthday party. Everyone is invited. We're going to have birthday cakes. I'd like to do it for every month. So there's a sign-up sheet down there. We're going to have super de-duper soups. Not just soups, super de-duper. And I know you guys all make super de-duper soups. So there's a sign-up sheet for soups. There's a sign-up sheet for cakes. And I have it on good authority that the August birthdays, we're going to have chocolate cake with chocolate icing, with chocolate dipped chocolate, and chocolate dripped, chocolate dripped strawberries. And if you guess, August people are chocoholics. Yes. But there's more. There's going yes. to be games galore. They're coming up into my head. But the best one I have right now I bet you've never played it before. Pin the tail on the organist. <laughs> what? <laughs> so. I hope we I, don't mean that literally. <laughs> I don't know. I'm dreaming them up. Anyway, it's going to be an awesome time. Family, friends, neighbors, please come and invite them all. This is kind of our outreach, and we are going to make it the ultimate ultimate birthday bash you will have this year. I'm done. Okay, are there any other announcements that need to be highlighted this morning? Yes, Kim. I just wanted to highlight the, the Boy Scout, the Troop um, 82 blood drive is on the 14th. Happy Valentine's Day, so you can give bread. <laughs> And that does happen to be the Ash Wednesday service, so you can begin Lent by giving of yourself. So you can sign up on the New York Blood Center website, and I hope you do. Unfortunately, I'll be out of town on a business trip, but somebody can take my place. That person can give up the Lent. <laughs> <laughs> give up a pint of blood. Patsy's got the idea. Thank you. Okay. No other? Okay, then let us, let us begin our worship.
please join with me in the responsive call to worship. In the darkness of long nights and the quiet of winter days, In the season of slumber and sleep, we trust in God's protection. In the time of waiting for new life, we surround ourselves with God's cloak of love. And hope for the day when we shall burst forth Our opening hymn is In the Still of Winter, and it's sung to the tune of How Firm a Foundation. Please be seated. Let us join together in the opening prayer. God of the darkened sky and chilly dawn, blanket of snow and icy pond, teach us your truths in these short days and long nights. Teach us the lessons of waiting. Like seeds and bulbs lying hidden, may we nurture the silences and trust in your wisdom hidden in the stillness. Teach us the lessons of expectancy, of opening our eyes to see everyday wonders in our winter world. God of all seasons, we celebrate this day with you. Amen. We'd like to lead off our grace jar this morning. Often when we do items for grace jar, it's the things that make us happy or uh, things that we have wished for and longed for. Um, but this morning, I want to speak of grace in a different context. Uh, at around 3 o'clock on Saturday morning, Gail passed from this life into eternal life. And while that gives us great sorrow, I, there is grace in what happened. Gail was able to be at home in a bed, not in a hospital room, in a hospital bed. Chip was sleeping in a, a chair alongside of her bed, so she had his company with her. And she passed under hospice care, which means that she was kept comfortable and calm and unafraid and without any pain or stress for the final days of her life. And that, to me, is one of the truest meanings of experiencing God's grace, when one's passing can be as gentle and as it possibly can be, thanks to the grace of God who takes us from this life into the next. And I'm so thankful that for Gail, her suffering is over, and she is now at peace in the arms of God forever. So that is my grace for the morning. And also the fact that the sun started shining again yesterday because I was so sick and tired of gray and rain. <laughs> I 
This grace also relates to Gail. This morning I went to my coffee pot, the coffee pot, and was making the morning coffee as usual. And as I looked at the little window in the kitchen, there sat a small aloe plant. And just before the plant sale last year, I had an enormous aloe plant, just huge. Mm -hmm. And I brought it to Gail, and she broke it apart and replanted them to sell at the plant sale. And she specifically took two little ones and said, I put these for you so you can do it again someday. Uh. And I saw that little aloe plant growing there, thought of Gail, and truly the grace. Amen. Well, I don't know how I follow those two. <laughs> um, on Robert's birthday on Thursday, I was at a friend's house. <clears throat> I parked in the parking lot, and there was two cars in, in front of me. And I went into her house to do the business that I was there to do. And she has a teenage son who was um, up and going to school late because he's a se senior. And he got in his car, and he backed didn't look behind it and just backed into my car. So my grace is that I was not in the car. He was fine. My car is a mess. But um, this poor kid, it was just devastated, but typical teenager like this, you know, uh, saying, uh, who had told his mother, I know what I'm doing, uh, apparently didn't know what he was doing, <laughs> and has learned a, um, a life lesson to always look behind your car before you back up because <laughs> it could have been a kid instead of my car. Mm. So I, I'm grateful and that, uh, and I prayed for this poor boy and I, um, and it, you know, it's just, it's just a thing. It's not somebody's life. So um, that's my grace for today. Mm -hmm. A serious grace day today. Um, I had to have a small medical procedure this week and everything went just as it should be, the best possible outcome, so I'm very, very grateful for that. And So are we. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and I'm uh, very grateful that it is the perfect weather for maple sugaring. Uh, so Mike and I tapped our trees and as soon as we tapped them yesterday, drip, 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 drip. Love to hear that sound. I love to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Okay, you know what, Lily, I, I have a question for you. I don't know, does, not, I, am I the only one who still gets a paper newspaper? Yes, <laughs> probably. probably. Yeah, I know, I am a Luddite, I admit it. I am, I am not a technology person. I do read the news every day online, but I do get the comics. So have you ever seen a comics page in a newspaper? Never, okay. Well, this is an example of what you see. And I, you know what, I, can I come closer and show it to you? because it's kind of small. I don't know if you know this cartoon. Have you ever seen this cartoon? This is Marmaduke. Any of you are familiar with Marmaduke? Oh, yeah. Okay. Marmaduke is this, I think he's a Great Dane, right? He's a big the Great Dane. And in this comic, the kids who own Marmaduke, who, who, for, well, I shouldn't say own, because that's wrong, but Marmaduke is their dog. Um, the kids look, and they're in snow fields, you know, lots of snow, they're making a snowman. And they say, okay, Marmaduke, you can help if you're careful. Marmaduke, we'll put the snowman's head on. And another kid says, I know, let's make snow angels. Did you ever make a snow angel? Lie down in the snow and go like this with your arms and your legs and make a snow angel? Well, that, see that? The kid's making a snow angel. You can see them. So they're busy making a snow angel, and then Marmaduke comes and goes in between the two kids and, of course, ruins all the snow angels. And the kids say, this is hopeless. We're going back inside. They give up. And then a voice comes out of the sky. Can you imagine whose voice might come out of the sky? God. God saying, hey there, big guy, can I help? 
And in the next picture, you see this beautiful snow angel. It looks like a real angel. It's got real wings and a real robe and a real form of a person, and it's huge. It's in the snow, and the kids look and go, Mom, Dad, come here. You really need to see this. And you know what I got out of this cartoon, this comic this week? That God does really great things in our lives sometimes, things we don't expect. God helped Marmaduke to make this beautiful angel. And sometimes God gives us gifts, blessings, said, that we said, get to do wonderful things. God does wonderful things for us, and it's sometimes very surprising. So remember that, okay? That God's always got something special in store for us, okay? And thank you for letting me come and talk to you this morning. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, can't get back that way. I have to go this way. <laughs> I'm trapped. <laughs> Lily, you ready to go to Sunday school? Good morning. Psalm 147, praise for Jerusalem's restoration and prosperity. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of stars. He gives them, he gives names to all of them. Great is our Lord and the abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. The Lord supports the afflicted. He brings the wicked down to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises to our Lord on the lyre. It is he who covers the heavens with clouds, who provides rain for the earth, who makes grass sprout on the mountains. It is he who gives the animals its food and feed the young ravens that cry. He does not delight in the strength of, horse, of a horse. He does not take pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord favors those who fear him, those who wait for his faithfulness. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. 
He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. In her poem, Winter Skies, Anne Weems writes, Winter is winning, the world is gray, the ground is frozen, and all signs of spring hidden. Inside, the church is crammed with Cassandras, their dismal voices hovering over once green land, projecting gloom and more gloom. Only the children see that the sky is full of angels and of stars. About this time of year, a great many people are feeling just that way. Not just that they're living under winter skies, but that they're living with winter hearts. Tired of short, cold, dark, too early days and long, colder, darker nights. Sick of freezing rain, fed up with gray. The holiday season is a distant fading memory and spring is a distant unseen promise. Winter is winning and there doesn't seem to be much that can be done about it. They're depressed, discouraged, maybe even disappointed. If this harsh season isn't enough to send a winter chill through the stole, the news is, whether it's politics, the economy, the environment, the social fabric of our nation or whatever, it just seems to be more bad news. No wonder some have winter hearts. Winter of the heart seems an apt description of the way the people of Isaiah's time felt. It was a dark and difficult time in their nation's history. In its war with the Babylonians, Judah had been overwhelmingly defeated. Jerusalem, its capital city, had been captured, its walls pulled down, the magnificent temple destroyed, the king and his family taken into captivity and deported to Babylonia along with a great number of its citizens. The Judean exiles living in Babylonia were filled with despair, disillusionment, and disappointment. That they had winter hearts is not surprising considering the circumstances, but what is startling is where they placed their disappointment. The one they saw as disappointing, the one who had failed to meet their expectations was none other than God. Psalm 77 verse 10 expresses what was apparently the sentiment of these despairing, disillusioned Judeans. One contemporary translation puts it this way, what hurts me most is this, that God is no longer powerful. While another says, what hurts me most is that you no longer help us with your mighty arm. Could there be a greater disappointment, a more compelling reason for winter hearts in the people of God than this loss of faith in their God? At the end of his film, Life, Love and Death, Woody Allen faces the audience as a man who is about to be executed for no good reason. He looks around anxiously, waiting for a promised way to escape but no savior comes. And he says, the important thing I think is not to be bitter. If it turns out there is a God, I don't think that he's evil. The worst you can say about him is that basically he's an underachiever. 
This daring humor verges on blasphemy, yes. But I think Alan is acting as God's loyal opposition. He's asking a question that we all ask at some time in our life. Where is God in the midst of all this suffering? It can seem that God is absent or uncaring or inactive. Those exiled Judeans were certainly beginning to think so. They despaired that God did not even see what happened to them or was indifferent to their suffering or was simply not doing anything to help them. How could they maintain faith in God's ability to save when their experience was contradicting such a belief? They feared that God was not able to bring about a new salvation in these worst of circumstances. And they could not conceive of God acting in the world in a way beyond the boundaries of their experience. From the perspective of their distress, God was no longer working on, behalf, on their behalf or was powerless to help them. God was a disappointment, an underachiever, and there was naught but gloom on their horizon. Then along came the prophet Isaiah with a message of good news, the end of the Babylonian exile. Over and over and over again, he proclaimed that the Judeans who lived in that foreign nation were about to be released and allowed to return home. Now, Isaiah's proclamation rested on a strong foundation, his confidence in both the power and the gracious will of God. He said to them, why do you say that God is unaware of your plight? or that God ignores your just cause. You are mistaken. Have you not known? Have you not heard? God is the everlasting God, the one who never tires, whose understanding is far beyond human comprehension. God is the one God, the almighty God the one who created the earth and calls out the stars whose strength knows no limits and who gives that strength to the weak and the powerless, the one who gives the power to fly to the exhausted who wait for God. The powerful God, your God, is calling you to freedom, will save you, restore you, renew you. Have confidence, have faith. Commit yourself to God in hopeful expectation. For though you are dispirited and despondent now, you have good reason to be optimistic. And that reason is God. Many of us may be walking around with winter hearts. And not just because it's been so dreary, dark, and cold. Personal problems, family troubles, failures, losses, sickness, death, depress us. Disasters, natural or otherwise, wars, economic woes, social ills, they disillusion us. The seeming absence of God in our world disappoints us. I found an answer in last Sunday's comics as well. This one is Garfield. Garfield's looking out on a yard, and, a, and he sees snow up to the window, and a snowman with its head fallen off. Garfield sighs, and he thinks, I'm getting the winter blues. What am I to do? I see him looking around, the glum look on his face. He goes, I know. Next frame, the last frame in the comic, he is sitting in an easy chair alongside a roaring fire. John in the center, Odie on one side, and Garfield on the other. And the last thought that he has is, and this was his answer, close the curtains. <laughs> Just don't look, in other words. <laughs> How do we maintain hope in God's ability to save 
when such a belief is contradicted by our experience? Well, Isaiah's answer is that God is more than the sum total of our experience. God is beyond our comprehension and incomparable to anything that we can imagine. Therefore, it is impossible to say at any time or under any circumstance that our plight is hidden from God or that God might be indifferent to our situation or that God is powerless to save even when it seems otherwise. Yes, the world is gray, the ground is sort of frozen, and all signs of spring are hidden. As author Jessamine West once said, winter could drop down out of a clear sky, sharp as an icicle, and without a sound, pierce your heart. And that's true. But that doesn't mean that winter is winning nor that we should be dismal predictors of gloom. Perhaps all it takes to bring spring hope to a winter heart is the knowledge, the assurance that God can. Or as Martin Luther King Jr. put it, God is able. There is nothing God cannot do, nor anything that God would not do for our salvation. Jesus is proof of that. We are children of the Almighty God. We are followers of the risen Christ. We know that the God of the resurrection has the power to bring spring out of the worst of winters. We know that God can warm our winter hearts and renew our winter world. The seed of hope within us is just invisible, not non-existent merely dormant, not dead. In my book of Anne Weems' poems, a few pages away from the opening poem, Winter Skies, I found this one entitled Hope Growing in Winter. It goes like this. I was surprised in January by a crocus growing right outside my kitchen door, a splotch of spring that burst through winter's veil. Surprised again, in just two weeks, I couldn't find the crocus for the snow. Fresh fallen, the last laughter in winter's fling. It is buried now, my crocus, hidden, but not forgotten. For I know it's there, hope growing in winter, shalom beneath the snow. As it says, uh, the quote above, below the winter heart up there, how many lessons of faith and beauty we should lose if there were no winter in our year. My wish for you today is that hope and faith and peace may grow in every winter heart. Amen. Our hymn, another one that's being sung to, I found two winter hymns and I just couldn't resist singing them. This one is called Tis Winter Now and it's sung to the tune Gift of Love.
Please be seated. But before we join in prayer, are there any for whom you have special concern this morning? Yes, I have a praise that Robert's surgery went well on Monday. So trigger finger is going away. Let's hope. So praise God. Um, prayers for my friend Andy, um, well, his family. Uh, he's my neighbor a couple doors down, and he's been um, battling cancer for a while, and he just passed away this past week, and he has two teenage children. So um, just prayers for his wife and children and the rest of his family. For my brother, Kevin, who's still recovering from uh, brain damage, uh, he's making better progress every day, just more power and faith that he has, and just blessings. That's it. just want to say that my, my grandson, Matthew, is uh, doing pretty well. He finally is going to get a port put in for his chemo treatments. He's had one through intravenous but now you should be able to start the other. So keep him in your prayers. He's going to need a lot of them. Thank you. Let us be in prayer. As winter storms afflict the land, bringing danger and discomfort in their snow and ice and winds, so do winters of the soul afflict your people, O God. The deepening snow of troubles and fear that immobilize us the treacherous ice of risks and falls that injure us, the cold winds of rejection and loneliness that isolate us, all sometimes seem to conspire together to make us forget the fullness of all life seasons, your promise of sea time and harvest that shall not fail. In the midst of nature's winter, O oh God, help us to remember the dormant seed the incipient bud, the hibernating bear. In the midst of the soul's winter, O oh God, help us to remember the promise of new life, new creation, and even resurrection that we know through Jesus Christ. To all those who feel this day the afflictions of winter, either through nature or through whatever the cause, their soul's wintry season, Bring, we pray, through your spirit and through our love, signs of the warmth, nourishment, and hope that will make even the winter a time of beauty, grace, and growth. Amen. Let us make our gift to God.
Please be seated. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Redeemer. We give thanks to you, O God of mystery, that in the darkness you are light, in the cold you are warmth. Help us to draw near to you, remembering that you offer us the strength of endurance as we journey through the seasons of change. May the clarity of your vision for the world strike us as do the sights of snow-capped hills, the frost on the fields, the sun on a winter's day, the clear and healing air. As creation lies resting, gaining strength for being born anew, bring your hand of love upon it and bless it with health and care. We turn our lives to you, O God, in trust and thanksgiving, joining together in the song of an ending praise. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O God most high. Blessed is one who comes in the name of the Savior. Hosanna in the highest. Quiet, gentle God, we remember the time when Jesus faced difficult times and destructive forces. We too, when we too experience the dark night of the soul, may we find the courage to trust in your guiding light. Christ has shown us that life is stronger than death. As we eat together at this table, we remember the words he spoke to his companions on the eve of his betrayal. As he broke the bread and gave thanks, he told them, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and said to them, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. May the Holy Spirit rest upon this bread and wine as we share together, and may we be filled with your grace. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The table is prepared and Christ our Lord awaits you to join with him in Holy Communion. Please follow the direction of the ushers, come up the center aisle and receive communion at the um, foot of the chancel here. Return to your seats on the side aisles and I am going to ask Pam and uh, Jen to please come forward to serve. Come up. And I'll serve all of you. The body and the blood of Christ given and shed for you the body and the blood of Christ given and shed for you. The body and the blood of Christ given and shed for you. The body and the blood of Christ given and shed for you. The body and the blood of Christ given and shed for you. Who gets which? You're doing bread, you're doing cup. Thank you. I did it. I took it.
Let us pray. God of amazing grace, in the darkness of winter months, we are grateful that you remain with us. We give you thanks for this holy meal and pray that it may strengthen us to follow Christ, the everlasting light. Bless all our days. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 140 in our hymnal, Great is Thy Faithfulness. benediction this morning is actually a poem. It's one quarter of a four-quarter poem about the seasons. God be with you in the winter when the snow lies deep and white, when the sleeping fields are silent and the stars gleam cold and bright, when the hand and heart are tired with life's long and weary quest. God be with you in the winter, just to guide you into rest and give you peace. Amen. Let us form a circle and do our closing song. I have a question for you while you're making a circle. Some of you think about, do you have a favorite season? Whose favorite season is winter? Anybody's? I mean, beside Heidi's? I mean, definitely Heidi's and Clay's and Debbie's. No? No? How about spring? Favorite season? Spring? Wow, you don't have a favorite season? All right. Summer? Summer? Fall. Oh, fall, okay. Yes? There isn't no snow. Well, I can't help that, but there's been plenty of cold, dry, gray, dreary, rainy, whatever. <laughs> there's been plenty of that. <laughs> 
God be with you till we meet again. Peace of the Lord be with you all.